Where did Jesus go? Where is heaven? Where do all our loved ones go when they die? Where does God live? So many questions are raised by these Easter stories, and I have some more for you. Where did Jesus go when he wasn't appearing to the disciples for those 40 days in which Luke tells us that the risen Christ remained close, but not always physically present with them? Why do the Gospels of Matthew and John tell us the story so differently and yet just as truly as Luke does? Why doesn't the Gospel of Mark tell any resurrection stories at all? We've been taking our time during the great 50 days of Easter to mull over the Easter stories about Jesus' resurrection. What a luxury, taking our time, lingering, wondering, we have been taking time because in many ways this coronavirus epidemic has given us time to linger and mull over the things we believe, the things about which we truly care. Deep in our hearts we know that things will never be the same again, but we will know that we were there when the change happened, a change that affected the whole world in a way that had never happened before. Can you imagine the stories that will be told and the meanings that will be derived? But let's get back to the Easter stories about Jesus. There's something in these stories about the nature of storytelling around matters that are true. There are so many stories and each of them is different which makes me believe that something truly extraordinary happened. There was an experience that happened to many people in different places and in different ways, and it changed their lives, and it changes our lives. They were locked up and keeping away from others, kind of like us these days, because in a way they were infected by Jesus, if you don't mind me speaking that way, and they were hiding away because of it in fear. They knew that as friends and accomplices of Jesus, they were considered dangerous to the powers that be, and in this fearful and anxious state, gathered together with each other to support and care for one another, Jesus appeared to them. I do have some ideas about where Jesus went during the 40 days mentioned in our text today. When I study the Bible, I try to take into consideration the world view of the times. I consider the difference between the Greek world view, which is the language in which these stories were written down, and the Aramaic world view, which is the language within which they were first experienced and told. When I do this, I am taken into an entirely different world and an entirely different way of experiencing life. I can just catch a glimpse of the world view because I have spent years learning the actual Aramaic words and pondering the meaning of the actual Aramaic Lord's Prayer. I am also learning about thin places and the spirit world, which are very close to us, but within a completely different realm or dimension than that which we usually call heaven. The early Celts knew about this, and so do Aboriginal people around the world. Also, I am learning that the physical sciences have so much to teach us about these ancient mysteries. I am also learning that these kinds of discoveries take time, time that we don't usually have. So let us all receive the gift of this time we are being given right now as a Christian community during this Easter season 
and let us prepare to be clothed with power. What is she talking about, I can hear some of you saying. Well, I am using biblical language to talk about the real heart of the matter, which is the Holy Spirit. The momentum of all the Easter stories is towards the day of Pentecost, towards the disciples and us being filled with the Holy Spirit, just as Jesus was. On Ascension Day, Jesus withdraws from the limelight so that we and his disciples can discover and experience the real heart of the matter, the power of the Spirit within the whole creation and within our own lives. Amen. May it be so.